633. Um, first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from 5-4. Can I get a motion to approve? Verbally? Uh, I move to approve the minutes from May 4th. Can I get a second? Second anyone? I don't think I should second it because I wasn't there, so. <laughs> I guess I can give it a second. All in favor, raise your hands. Aye. Well, we've got. You have two, zero, abstain zero. You have two abstentions, right? <coughs> Three, zero, two. All right, minutes are approved. Let's go to the first item on the agenda. Um, actually, we're gonna have to move this because I was hoping that Nick would be giving us some information on the uh, <laughs> discussion of the 128 Business Council uh, Regionalization Plan. As you remember, when we had uh, the 128 Business Council here, we talked about looking for partners that would get in on the, um, on the grant and there'd be a financial um, obligation from the municipality. Um, if Nick shows up, we'll look to get a to get an update from that. Um, I'd like to go to the next agenda item. Safe routes to school. I don't know if we've had any progress since our last meeting. Does anyone have any information on safe routes to school? Uh, I was going to say I can just quickly chime in, and then Melissa, you can probably add more to it. Um, we we did send the parent survey out. Um, waiting for responses on that. I know that they did observations at um, the middle school and at what Fox Hill and at was it Memorial? Yep. Yep. Um, so we're moving forward um, as we can, uh, completing um, you know whatever paperwork they're requiring at this point. Um, so I mean, it is moving forward. Anything else you want to add, Melissa? Um. Yeah, I think we're waiting for the all the results of everything and then that will kind of determine what next steps we do in the fall, be it like curriculum or things like that. Um, and also the um, grant applications will open in the fall and things like that. So I think I think for the as far as the school year goes, I think we're pretty much wrapped up and we're just waiting on um, safe roads to school. Can anyone um, elaborate on what was in the uh, survey for parents like what type of questions were they it, they it was actually one question question that we all wanted asked we weren't able to add but if you'll wait one second i can tell you exactly what was um in the survey it was pretty well, quick she pulls, well she pulls that up since we met on the fourth the the massachusetts walk bike and roll to school day was may 4th and burlington decided to postpone it because it rained that day in the fifth was a gorgeous day and Fox Hill, um, I think BCAT took some, showed some pictures, but the bike racks were overflowing. Uh, the crossing guard told me she thought there was over 200 kids that walked to school. So that was a huge, huge success and really speaks to the accessibility of Fox Hill. Um, so we just really need to figure out ways to kind of capitalize on that momentum. Like we know so many people are able to, you know, take alternate routes to school. So we just need to figure out how to encourage that going forward. It was a lot of fun. Well, that's great news because, you know, the next generation, if they understand that there are alternate means to, to getting in a car, I think most of us saw that there really wasn't at the time, but step, step forward is making progress on that. 200, wow, that's great. Yeah, it was, and um, we had some, we had an assist from the police department too. They came and they parked on 62 um, to help kids cross there, which was nice. And uh, I'll put in a little plug. I hope that maybe that crosswalk could be one of the first things we ask for grant money for um, in terms of like a flashing light or something up there for um, the kids to cross 62. Because once you're there, it's a beautiful sidewalk all the way down. Westwood, so, um, it was really, I, I was, I didn't reach out, they reached out to me. So that was really helpful that the, uh, we had a police officer at the school and at, on 62. Yeah, no, that, that crosswalk, Melissa, is, um, how's the visibility on Wilmington Road coming to that crosswalk so, in both directions? It's, 
it's visible, but it's hard to tell that there's a crosswalk there. The signs are kind of in people's yards. It's in a good spot. I think it's not on the turn of the road. It's right across from the playground, but I think you need, I personally have been in that cross, literally in the crosswalk and had cars whiz by. And I just think that they don't realize that it's a crosswalk. Right. Um, because it, it is a crest of a hill. So you can't, it's, it either needs to be raised or you need something flashing like they have in Arlington, you know, where you press the button and it just right. up. Um, so I think it's straightforward. I think the crosswalk's in a good place. Um, but that's actually, I mean, while we're on the subject, after the survey, one of the potential options for Safe Routes to School, she did the arrival dismissal audit. One of the next things is, I forget what she calls it, but like the journey to school where they open that radius up and they say, okay, how's everybody getting there from further away. So I think that intersection, that crosswalk would come into play in that audit of there's, I mean, half of the Fox Hill district is on the other side of Wilmington Road. It's right. not far and it's not, it's fairly flat. It's easily walked, but you got to get across Wilmington Road. And Nick is sure is very familiar with that intersection as well. Good evening, Mr. Selectman. So, person, excuse me. Hey, uh, so, just to follow up on that, Melissa. So, you think if there was the flashing lights there, that's in a visible sign, uh, visible spot enough that that would be adequate. I think so, and also it's access to Veterans Park too, which is a you know right. a Parks and Rec location and and baseball games and things like that. So, I think it would improve access to that park and um, the school. Yeah, I think I think it was Millie Nash that brought up at one of our meetings. If you, if you make one of the schools, you know, you move forward with the schools, the other schools see what's happening and and you know follow suit. So it is good to be able to you know they, they might seem like small steps now, but I think that's how that's how we get there. Uh, Catherine, did you say you had the information on the parent yeah? Survey? So on the survey, there were like uh, eight questions and um, nine well eight nine ten questions roughly. Of course, the one that we wanted to add, which we couldn't, was, you know, why do you drive your student to school? But it was just basic information. What grade is your child in? What street do you live on? How does your child get to school on most days? How does your child get home from school on most days? How many vehicles do you have in your household? How many people in your household have a driver's license? And then if you selected, you know, it says 3A, if you selected family vehicle or carpool for travel to school, do you usually drop off your child on your way to work or another destination um, or another home? And then if you, uh, 4A, it said, if you selected family vehicle or carpool for travel home for school, do you usually pick up your child on your way home from work or another location or another home? So, that was the questionnaire that went out. And again, um, it just went out, I think, last week. Okay. And so we're waiting for, you know, people to respond and get the results from it. Um, and like I said, I wish we could have altered it and added the why, but we weren't able to. Yeah, I, I think that would, um, you get some interesting answers from, from that one. Um, and I think as people see that there are alternate means, you know, whether it's, it's, walking riding your bike the bus is really it's a it's a benefit this town provides and we pay you know pretty well for it and to get people to adopt it again it's important and kids learn that, that you know public transportation is part of the solution getting people out of cars and not having that next generation feel like the only way to get around is a car um, like i said all part of the solution so safe routes to school folks will take that data and come up with some suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they'll do with it, honestly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but Eileen, you have a question. Yes. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Eileen Sickler. Wait, I can get that video going. Where's that pretty face? Wait for it. There she is. Um, hi, everybody. So, um, Tom meeting member precinct four, and also a member of the. Um, uh, transportation committee. So um, the survey, Catherine, was that were they questions that were given to you by by Judy Crocker from Safe Routes? That was her Correct. standard template. Yeah, it was their um, standard template. Yep. So 
uh, how long, what, what's the timing in terms of, as you said, it just went out when- so I it, believe we gave people two weeks. I think it was dictated by Safe Roots. Do you have a date? Cause I feel like it went out more, almost two weeks ago now. Was it two weeks? Uh, well, I think, well, we had our school committee meeting last Tuesday, right? And I think he had just sent it out prior to that. Um, but again, I was, I, I, I'd have to go back and look at notes, honestly, because I was out of town that week before. So. Um, so I just, I just went to the town's website and the school website. I didn't see, you know, take this survey notification. I mean, is, is that something you can get posted or, or how did that go out? I guess is, is my first question. I, I sent it out to parents, like via Aspen. Via e so email to parents. Directly. Okay, so so you have email for all the parents, and that's how yeah. it went. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. I wonder if Judy had any idea of what they normally get for um, percentage of respondents on on things like that. Okay, the survey will be sent out on Monday, May sixteenth, and close on Friday, May twenty seventh. So okay. it's closed. That's 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 tight. Oh, so it's over. I believe the two weeks is dictated by Safe Roots, if I recall. Okay, so it's over already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I couldn't remember if it went out last week or the week before. Yeah. So yeah, I did see something about that. Okay, all right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get back with um, Judy and see, you know, what exactly the time frame is for them to. To crunch the numbers. I can't imagine it takes too long. It's an online profile. I mean, online survey can be fairly quick, um, but I won't pretend to know how the process works. Um, any other questions on Safe Roots to School while we're on the topic? My my only my big concern was the timing of it going out because of break. It went out right around break, so I, I'm not sure what kind of response level we're going to get. I see Mildred has a question. Billy, you have a question? Um, hang on. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, Millie. Millie, can you hear us? All right, well, while we wait for Millie on that, um, Nick, we skipped over the follow-up discussion of the 128 Business Council Regionalization Plan. I know that um, when we last met, Melissa was going to report to the selectmen. Um, do you have any, any update on that discussion? Thanks, Rick. Um, hey, everybody. Um, not really. Um, you know, Melissa came before the board uh, at our last meeting um, and just let us know that she's continuing discussions with the 128 Business Council to try and get uh, more parameters and better understanding of what the commitment it level is. Uh, she believes that at this point, there it, it, it would be a, a no cost commitment to start. Uh, but that, you know, the real, the real hope of the 128 business council is that there be a financial commitment from the, the private businesses. Um, <clears throat> and then she also had presented, uh, some of the, um, MBTA route updates, um, that, uh, kind of tied at least from a proposal plan perspective into what their, their notion was, right? Stronger main arterial way with additional, you know, um, first and last mile kind of transportation. So um, we, we as a board gave her a, uh, gave her verbal consent uh, to continue um, along the discussions um, so that we could then follow back up on our, at our next meeting on the 13th. So my hope is that by then she'll have more, con at least more substantial information for us to um, react to so that we can figure out what direction we're, we're going in. But I mean, it's generally favorable. I mean, if it, you know, if it's not gonna cost us an arm and a leg, then um, we're we're more or less in. Well, you made, you made one comment, Nick, that 
that I didn't pick up in an earlier discussion with them. Um, you said that they would be looking for contributions from the business community. I thought it was specifically a commitment from the municipality. How the municipality raises that money could be a different story, but I'm, I'm hearing there's a commitment from the private sector rather than the public sector. So it was, to my knowledge, it was always a, a, a two-part commitment. Uh, their their goal was to leverage um, the the developers and landowners uh, first, and then also have the municipalities bank in as well. Um, so to my knowledge, I don't know how well those conversations with private sector is going. Um, but that was one of the the asks of the board to Melissa to try and, you know, ascertain what that was because initially in, in the original conversation, um, you know, they were saying that the municipality would would match a percentage of whatever was put in by the private sector. And at this point, we just don't know what's what. So um, I think like as they're like putting their feelers out there and, and understanding what um, they're trying to, how folks are reacting to the, to the proposal. Uh, they may be, and this is me personally, you know, hypothesizing, um, they may be shifting kind of what the uh, contribution ask is so that they can see if they can make this succeed. Okay. Um, when they gave their presentation last meeting, they were, they were mentioning a June 6th deadline for an opt-in. Um, and I don't know if the 128 Business Council is talking with the private sector individually. I can tell you there's been no discussion at the Chamber's Government Affairs Committee. There's been no, we haven't been approached. And that's usually the um, the point of contact initially so that we can find individual companies that might want to carry it on. Not to say that uh, everything runs through the Chamber here. It doesn't. Um, but that's, um, I wanted to get an update on that. It's just the, the it seemed like the time frame it was a real push last meeting and maybe that maybe that's been pushed out now I don't know yeah we so we so number one I'll I'll follow with Melissa on that to see if there's intent to loop uh, at least their government affairs committee into uh, the conversation um so clarity on on the deadline uh they were hoping to get commitments by the sixth because the uh, Grant due date is the 24th of June, if I recall correctly. Um, so they're they're working, to my knowledge, you know, fast, hard, and heavy to to try and get I think commitments before at least at least the original plan was to get commitments by the sixth so that they could have a buffer of a few few weeks to draft the proposal. Something tells me though that it'll all be happening in tandem right the 24th. Right. Well, it'll be interesting to see how they can fold in the uh, proposed MBTA bus redesign. That's and that's where we're going to segue into the next item. Um, I don't know how many of you have heard or seen. Uh, Catherine, do you want to talk about something before we move on? You muted. Catherine, you muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> No I forgot to bring up um, while we were talking about the schools before the last meeting I had you all had asked me to try and get a copy of the high school survey from the high school students and you know kind of you know share that information with you when the students were saying they were you know having trouble um, getting rides home and weren't participating and so I did forward that and I, I didn't know if you all had had a chance to look at it and discuss it at the last meeting or what the plan was for that information and then um, just wanted to make sure that didn't just die. No, we did not discuss it at the last meeting. Um, maybe we can, because I don't, I'd love you to be there. I know you, you've got a deadline tonight. Maybe we can put that down for agenda item next, next month. Melissa, if you could add that um, to our notes that we'll put, we'll revisit that. It's right, we've been moving along pretty fast. We've got a lot of information. At some point we have to, you know, digest it all and come up with some recommendations. And it's easier if we do it as the, um, you know, the things are presented and we, we have a good idea. I mean, not to say it can't change, but we've got to start formulating, you know, recommendations. So yeah, we'll, put, we'll, we'll discuss that at the, at the next meet, at the next meeting. Um, so the MBTA redesign, 
I'm going to share my screen here. I don't know if any of you have seen this. I had seen it, but I am not familiar enough with the current state to uh, have really judged. I saw some chatter that the 350 was being eliminated. Yeah. And hopefully I can restock this for a second. I can pull it up. So I've got to pull my. Okay. Not exactly. They're just going to make it go straight up Cambridge Street. Okay. I think that's helpful. Are you pulling it up? Okay. Okay. Can you, can everyone see my screen? Okay. So this is um, on mbta.com. If you go to projects, you'll see bus network redesign proposal. I'm just going to scroll down to um, Burlington, which will be in the bees. For the purpose of this meeting, we'll do it in English. <laughs> All right, everyone. Can everyone see that? Okay. You yeah, um, we're just seeing the top. Yeah, I'll slide down as we go. When okay. we get to the map, I mean this is just the, the marketing part of it. Um here's the network today. So in Burlington, we've got the we've gone over this before. We've got the 350, which uh runs to Alewife. We've got the 354, which runs through Woven to 93 and ends at uh, State Street in downtown Boston. And then the uh, 351, which is running from Bill Rick of Bedford, just to tie in to, to the network in Burlington. So this is the existing routes that we have in Burlington. 350 and 354, predominantly the ones that we're talking about. Now the proposal. The 350 continues to run through uh, through Burlington, down through Cambridge to Alewife. The big change is now the 94 takes over for what the 354 was doing. Um, it will run from Burlington down Cambridge Street to Four Corners, goes to Woven Center, and then heads down to Davis Square and terminates at Davis Square, where people wanting to go to downtown Boston would have to transfer there to the red line. Um, one of the benefits of this is it now affords us access to Winchester Center for the, the commuter rail. Also, if you were to transfer at Woven Center and get on the 133, you could go to Anderson. Um, whether or not we can we can have people that are looking to go those ways from Burlington, but it certainly is going to attract some additional people to possibly take jobs in Burlington. Now the selectmen have um, passed on a, a email from a, a resident that is taking exception to the loss of the 354. 354, keep in mind, used to run directly to downtown Boston. So it was a one a one stop ride. Now you're looking at you know, a changeover in Davis Square to the red line with some additional time. And I'll just pull up the, um, the email. So basically what this um, citizen is saying, you know, they previously rode the 352. Um, the 352 had been discontinued. And once it was discontinued, he started riding the 354 takes a little bit longer, but at least um, it was able to get there. And his, his trip was about 45 minutes. With this new redesign, you know, he's looking at an additional 20 to 25 minutes each way, which is adding, you know, to his commute. Um, the selectmen passed this on just to make sure that we were making the, um, the transportation committee aware that there are some people riding it that are 
they're probably going to take exception to it. There are public meetings being held, and I'll go back to the website to show when those are going to um, going to happen. And, and they're really looking for current riders and um, and potential riders to weigh in on what they believe um, is the best solution for them. And it's important that people that are current riders, because that's their their ridership is where the money comes from, um, are being served through their data. And, and looking at this, where the population shifts have been, these are their proposals based on what they think will bring the most ridership and, and help those that are most dependent on public transportation. Um, Burlington has is, is, you know, been the end of the line for the MBTA, we're the end of the line for the LRTA. Um, we're not a community that has historically been super dependent on public transportation, but we want to make sure that going forward, that's going to be an option for people. So I just wanted to pass this on if there was somebody that had reached out and said this was going to be a, a hardship to him. And he thought the only way that he was going to get past this was to probably buy a car. Um, again, that's that's going from Burlington into downtown Boston. Um, I just wanted to make sure that we, you know, passed on that information. and. and Told the selectmen that we would do that. So, looking back at the proposed bus routes, so does anyone have any comments on this? I've, I've really just started to to look at it and think of, you know, what it'll mean to to Burlington, to you know, those that are using it, not only to get out of Burlington but also to, to get into Burlington. One of our big um, challenges is we certainly have more people coming into Burlington during the day than are, than are leaving Burlington. Um, specifically on, on public transportation. So we want to make sure that we're aware of the needs of both those using public transportation to leave and as, as well as come in. So I'll just leave this up. Um, Rick, I will, uh, question. Open up for discussion. I'm not super familiar with the 354, but I'm seeing the change from the 354 was less than hourly. And now the 94 is 60 minutes or better. Yeah, one of the things, a major part of the bus redesign is not only more frequency, but service seven days a week. One of the uh, things that we've seen from the business community standpoint, um, those employees that are in, you know, restaurant, hospitality and service industries do not have reliable transportation to get home. Um, service wasn't running late enough and there was no service on on weekends, so they weren't they weren't even looking at jobs here. Um, so yes, you're right. There the the frequency is better, and the um, the number of times a week is better. However, they're going a little bit to different places. Let's go back to the previous the three the 354 again. It took a pretty straight route to get to 93. Well, not straight, but you know got to 93 and then once you're I'm, only seeing, you I'm only seeing the still that header are you trying to share the the map oh am i not you're not seeing this no i just see the better bus network the heading wow. yeah, that's all i see too okay well let's go back to stop sharing sorry about that all the time I, was okay. I, mean, I, have it, I have it pulled up on my screen too but all right. Actually, if you if you want to share yours, why you've got uh, yeah, I can try. That'd be great. I'm sorry about that. The whole time I was explaining the maps, you guys were looking at some marketing literature. Wow. All right. Where did you guys go? Okay, that's so that's the existing one. Yep. So you see the 354 in red, it runs from Chestnut Street where Lakashis is down to four corners through Woven Center and then 293 with termination at State Street. You know, it does stop, makes a couple stops along the way. Um, with the new proposal, the 94 takes the same path. It, it, it's connecting to Third Ave now as well. 
And it okay, so it doesn't look like you can pick it up at Chestnut Street. I mean, I, that's a splitting of a hair, but. Correct, correct. You would have to take the 350 if you were down at Chestnut Street and, uh, you know, pick it up at South Bedford and Cambridge. I see, okay. Or, or any of those stops along the way. Yep. Between South Bedford and Cambridge and Four Corners. Um, and then it runs to Woburn Center and, um, and then down to uh, Winchester and Davis Square. So one of the things that, you know, from the business community standpoint, it gives us access to Davis Square. There's a lot of people in, in uh, you know, in the Tufts area that would be potentially looking at jobs in Burlington where they didn't have access before. A, a lot of the, um, you know, students coming out of school, but it it may cause some, some problems for people in Burlington that were going directly to downtown Boston. I mean, you certainly could still, you could go to, um, Davis Square and get on the red line, um, depending on where where you're going in Boston, or you can go to Alewife. But you know, it's you're going to be taking the transfer, no matter which uh, which way you're going, if you're going to downtown Boston. I have a question: Where where does the 350 terminate? In Alewife. Okay. So okay, so then you would have to take the T from Alewife into Boston if. Yeah, I think it's probably depending if you're going downtown, it's probably a more direct route to go to Davis Square and take the red line from there. It depends on which part of Boston you're going to. And Alewife is red too. So you you wind up in the same spot down on Park Street. Yeah. Or South Station or something like that. The thing about the 350 is it's running, you know, the length of Mass Ave. And you know, there's a lot of stops. Um, it will be running more frequently, but so you can get the commuter rail goes to North Station, right? Lowell Line, right? So that's an option from 94, and that might be actually the fastest. Well, that's what I that's why I was asking the question. If he was thinking it was going to add another 40 minutes each way to his trip, maybe there's another way to do it. Yeah, there, there's certainly, well, the commuter rail is only going to get you to North Station. So now you're going from a bus to a commuter rail to the subway. It certainly is less convenient for him that got on one oh, yeah. bus and got dropped off at work. Yeah. I, I understand it. And that's the problem with public transportation. It, it does what the most people want to do. And, you know, you're going to hear from people who are, you know, see it, see it as a hardship and a, and a change. If there's enough people, then it, it will certainly have a, have an impact. Again, this is one of those things that they want to hear from those using it, from those who will use it, and the rest of us that say, yeah, it would be nice to have, but we never ride it. All too often, those people are the loudest and, and with a route that nobody's riding. So we want to make sure that we get the information out there and that people can weigh in on it. Um, Melissa, if you could just go back to, yep. um, back to the MBTA page, which is, which is just one click back, I think. This one? Yeah. Um, go back to the top. It, it talks about, uh, public forums. Oh, the, the 22nd is our particular, uh, time. Yep, I want to make sure that everyone knows, and it's the Minuteman and Metro North right there, Wednesday, June 22nd. I've already signed up for it. Um, certainly want to recommend anyone in this, this committee that would love to, you know, talk about this. But we should be pushing this out, you know, through the town's website, maybe through um, BCAT as well, to have people who are interested in public transportation currently taking it to be able to weigh in on it because we are, you know, that particular public session includes a lot of communities. And if you have, you know, 90% of the people are from one community, that's what the MBTA is going to hear. So we want to make sure that those that uh, are currently using it, want to use it or want to have an impact are, are there to, to weigh in. So we'll pass on that information. Um, 
following this meeting, but it's it's right there for anyone who's online right now. That's the link, and it's the Minuteman of Metro North, and you can sign up. It's a it's a virtual. Thanks, Melissa, for copying that. Mm -hmm. So let's let's just discuss that. Uh, any any thoughts, input? I know it's it's hard to take a quick look at it and, and get an understanding, especially if it, you're not one that's used to riding public transportation. I think one of the great things, um, and I know a lot of people that have ride the bus, you know, you get on the bus and you know it's going to be an hour and a half, you take a nap or you just get involved in a book or something and you wait for somebody to say, you know, it's time to get off. Um, we do have to be you know, cognizant of people who are who are depending on this. And also, you know, the future of trying to get additional workers into into the area. One of the things that we've done, I know that everyone in this committee is, is familiar with bringing life science companies to Burlington. And it's really helped to backfill and continue to backfill the uh, the tech sector, which is primarily, you know, working from home and, and certainly won't have the same number of people in the offices they once did. People coming from the life science industry, uh, especially those if they're relocating from Cambridge, many of them don't have cars. Many of them will look at, at the job in Burlington if they don't have a way to get there. You know, they may go to work for another company in Cambridge. So. We want to make sure that those companies that have chosen to locate to Burlington has ample um, access to employees. It's the number one problem in in all of business right now is is the work workforce shortage, and we want to make sure that transportation is not an impediment to that. It's it's critical to Bur to Burlington's economy and the tax base. So I'll stop talking here for a minute. Let's, uh, Catherine, go ahead. So is there a way to get this information, the, the date and the time of this meeting out to the general public? I mean, is there, can there be a, you know, I mean, I don't mean just homes, but, you know, to the restaurant managers and, and the businesses who actually have a stake in this and, and may not know that this is taking place. I mean, how do we get the word out? Yeah, I will, I am going to take care of that from the chamber standpoint. We'll get it to, um, to all of our members, one of the one of the difficulties that we have, and and we learned this through COVID, getting information out to businesses as much as they're they're all you know we see them, we don't necessarily have contact information, and and it was really a collaboration between the economic development office, the clerk's office, and myself to develop a better list. Now it's still not we don't have a button that we can push and says every business in town is going to be notified. But we are certainly um, much further along. We've had, you know, those that need special permits, those that need evictions license, those that, uh, you know, are in restaurant and hospitality. We have those, but we want to make sure that everyone knows because it's, you know, especially if you got a small business that may be, um, you know, five or six people that have a startup, you lose one person because of a, a bus route change that can have a devastating impact and. You know, some of these smaller companies are the ones that that grow up to be, you know, the modernists of the world. Um, you know, so we want to make sure that that everyone's happy. So we will get it out. The chamber will get it out. We'll get it to BCAT. I'm not sure. And maybe Nick, you have an idea what's the best format to get it out on the website, on the on the town website. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I I would contact um amy yeah. i will say that it's been in the boston globe as well i mean it's not just burlington that's experiencing changes so ho hopefully the state owes owns some of the responsibility too right um but yes yeah, yeah. my concern there melissa is you're absolutely right the state's done it cities have done it and at those public hearings, you will get an outpouring from people in the urban areas that are so dependent on it. And then maybe if, you know, if Burlington only has a couple of people, they said, well, maybe that route isn't as important as we thought it was. So I had a couple, I had one question is, do we have any data on the ridership, like the current ridership? Like I assume at the 354, I mean, this is just an assumption based on the change that it, it couldn't have had large ridership 
if they cut it, right? Yeah, but that's, that's, you know that? yeah. that's exactly how this is all based on. Not only okay. current ridership, but where the shifts of population are. Yeah. Um, because they get an outpouring of people saying, hey, I need, to, I need a ride and I don't have one. Um, so I work in technology in Watertown, and I will say we have shuttles directly from Harvard Square, um, North Station, and I'm trying to think where the, uh, like in Back Bay. So I think the shift to Davis is, a, is gonna be a huge win because I everybody that's, I mean, I used to live in Davis and I think that the kind of jobs that we're trying to create in Burlington are the folks that are living in Davis, at least until they have kids and need a house, right? So right. Um, I think that that will be a huge win, not to mention like, oh, I can stop in Winchester Center on the way home, Uber, and I can get groceries, like anything like that. I think that that, in my opinion, that 94 edition is is a win. But the I'm having a hard time because technically they could take the T in Davis all the way out to Alewife and catch the 350. So it seems just like limited. It's all this red line access. Um, and we, and you lose the South station, uh, North station, like the, all of 93 seems hard to, um, like nothing. There's no way we can connect to something that goes down 93 and into Boston. That just seems like a miss. Yeah, again, this is the MBTA. No, 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 no. Just certainly. commenting. Yeah. Now, Melissa, I do want to go back on something you said. You said that there were shuttles to Watertown. Are you talking about public shuttles or private shuttles? Um, it's like the campus shuttle. So I think anybody can ride it. I don't think okay. they show a badge, but it's operated by the Arsenal and the Charles. Okay. Yeah, th these, are, are... these are the TDM uh, ideas. And you know they they are they are a little siloed, and when you talk to uh, uh, Elizabeth and um, oh gosh I can't remember the other woman, uh, they do Monica. try and open a little bit up to the public. So yeah, primarily we've seen this before with 128 Business Council Middlesex three. These are privately funded, primarily from the larger um, companies that have you know campuses, and then they want to open it up to the public to get additional ridership, but. It, um, to my understanding, most of those are funded privately, and that's where we're going to have the struggle is to, to get a collaboration from the private sector, rather than them saying, why, you know, why would I kick in to a public solution when I can have a private solution, take my employees right to my spot, which keeps mine, you know, vital and, and you know, and profitable. So so I, I definitely wasn't suggesting shuttles. I was just saying, cause Watertown really doesn't, it has one bus line, but yes. I was definitely more suggesting that that's where we get a lot of people from. So I think like the technology workers are coming from Davis, all that. So I think, I think that's a win to have the bus there. Well, you're, you're shifting, you're shifting away from Alewife to Davis. And again, you'd have to look at the stats. So, right. Well, we're still going to Alewife. The 350 is still going to Alewife. Um, but what we've seen, um, you know, Middlesex 3 Coalition had a shuttle from Alewife directly to the district because those employees said, I'm not getting on that thing and waiting all day to get to work. I'll go somewhere else. And it's the private, you know, property managers that understand in order to be competitive, they have to offer other solutions. So we're at that point where the MBTA is redesigning, they'll lay out, you know, the main arteries, and then we have to figure out what's missing and, and start filling it in. But it's, um, if we oh. don't, if we don't oh. have people weighing in for Burlington at these hearings, uh, you know, we're going to lose some, yeah. some ability to get uh, some things done. That, that's absolutely right. I was at the uh, main hearing that kicked everything off and people go down to the uh, granularity of I my bus stop used to be across the street and now there's not a bus until 7.30, you know. So it does get into that, that level. So yes, you do want to have a lot of people. But I just want to say about the 350, if they shoot it straight up Cambridge Street and don't go to the Northwest Park like they used to with the connection to, you know, and, and people like that have to come from uh, uh, Davis Square, that's what I was talking about when you lose Alewife. You can go today, you can go directly to Alewife right up to the Northwest Park and then continue on to where they're building that big biotech lab up in Bedford. 
Um, so, you know, that's a little trade off. So I, that's why statistics are important because do we have, are we losing more people in ALWIFE or gaining more in Davis? And until you know the answer, then, you know, we're sort of just speculating, but we're Yeah, I think certainly this data, you know, as soon as it's printed, it's old. I don't know that they've taken into consideration, um, you know, the change that Burlington has had just in the last year. I mean, we talk about the Broad Institute coming to Network Drive and mm -hmm. Vicarstel coming to Network Drive and, and the permitting that just went over there. That's that's going to be a major, you know, life science center. Do we have ample transportation there? And how many people, you know, will be driving cars and how many are going to be looking for public transportation? Our thoughts have been with the shift to life sciences that more people will be coming from Cambridge, from you know some of the more ur urban areas to Burlington that may not have vehicles or don't wanna have vehicles. We don't wanna close um, the routes to any potential employees for, for the companies that have decided to locate here. You know, I think we've been very I fortunate. Have... I'm sorry. It, it's Millie again, uh, talking about the 350 uh, bus, something that I worked on before the pandemic was the 350 when it goes between Kendall uh, and Leahy, that's like a half a mile and there's no stop in between. And I said, there should be one by South Bedford Street because that would make it a quarter of a mile instead of a half mile. And I know I live on Sunset Drive, and it means that I have a half a mile to walk when I already have a half a mile to get from my house up to the Mall Road. And what happened was the MBTA put in a stop, a bus stop on the um, Mall Road at South Bedford Street on the Leahy side, but they did not put it on on the side by the daycare center, which is right across the street. And I've talked to Tom Hayes and I've talked to the economic Melissa about this, but um, so far nothing has happened. And with the pandemic, I feel hesitant to mention it because I'm not riding the bus at the moment because I'm staying socially isolated. But if anybody here has any wherewithal with the powers that be, I think having a, a bus stop sign there could make it much more advantageous for people on South Bedford Street and Lexington Street, uh, that whole area of town, um, you know, in addition, uh, it would be more for the residents, but one sign can't be all that difficult to put up. And if anybody has has any pull, maybe uh, we could get the signs on both sides of the street, which seems only logical. Yeah, Millie, I think all of this is subject to discussion and certainly being at those meetings you know, they may not be listening down to the granularity of the stops, but to hear from people from Burlington to help, you know, offset some of the, the inner city voices. There's, be, there's going to be a lot of people at these meetings. And the more that we can have to, to let them know that we're dependent on transportation, both in and out of Burlington, um, you know, really is critical and it's a step in the right direction for us. Right. Would this be they, something... Oh, I'm sorry. Would this be something that were I to go to that meeting, I could put it into a chat or some way? I feel bad because I don't have a camera and I'm on the phone, so I'm not exactly a visible kind of participant. Yeah, Millie, the, the, the problem here is, and you say, you know, it'd be great for people on Lexington Street and, you know, on Sunset and down that area. You have to find out how many people use it now and how many, they don't, they, they aren't necessarily gonna listen so much to people who say they will use it if it was there, because historically there aren't as many that, that end up using it as say they will. They're looking to take care of the people right now that are using it and those that don't have any other access. Um, you know, Burlington, we're, we're kind of a, a car oriented town and we're trying to shift and give other, um, other options for people, but it's it's important that people show up. Um, to get I, I hear you, and I'm wondering because what you say makes me uh, think that perhaps the reason they have a bus stop sign 
on South Bedford Street opposite uh, on the Mall Road opposite South Bedford Street is because it's right near the Leahy buildings of, of a number, and that may be where the people are coming from rather than from the Burlington side. So they figured they only need it so that the people can come out and take that particular bus rather than the one that's coming the other direction. Although it would seem like people going to those buildings might like to get off at that stop rather than having to walk from Kimball uh, down to it or up from Leahy. But I, I will keep that in mind and, and keep pushing the people that may be able to help. I think it's persistence is perhaps part of the solution. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And I think we're up against, you know, a, a much larger population that's going to be pushing much harder. Um, people who right. do not have cars. Do not have right. other alternatives. Any other comments? Right. Thank on, you. Yep. Any other comments on the MBTA proposed redesign? Okay. Um, we left a spot here on the agenda for for other items. Are there any? Um, first of all, I'll start with the committee. Any? issues that we haven't started to address yet. I mean, we've talked about seniors, we've talked about students, we've talked about employees. Are there any things that we're missing or anything else going on that, that people would like to, to add to the discussion? Rick, I don't know, and maybe Nick can bring this up, but maybe this could be a future agenda item because I know that the town meeting did pass the 3A. Is that transportation related? Um, that was the other Melissa um, is spearheading. Oh, yeah, Nick. Yep, so I can help kind of answer that. So um, to, to a certain extent, yes. Uh, so Melissa, um, is, is doing that study, which is going to look at both traffic and infrastructure um, between, let's say, Kinney Ave, and it's pretty pliable. Like we're going to probably push it a little further um, all the way through the the Wind Street Terry Ave uh, intersection. Um, <clears throat> so while traffic won't be the the primary focus, it will be a part of it, um, and we can absolutely leverage the information that she gains from that. From what I understand, it's only going to take like a, a couple months to do. Um, so I mean, it'll probably be done. Let's just assume. August ish, um, you know, so that, I mean, that information we can absolutely include in the report. Awesome. Okay, so there we're, we're talking about the whole looking at that corridor and, and, you know, making some suggestions on on the future. Yeah, I think it's the, the so Melissa's intent is to is to really try and figure out <clears throat> where where things are. Uh, and what improvements can be made without, I mean, she's, she's trying to look at things incrementally, right? I think, you know, we all know we want to see, you know, that everyone has their own grand vision for <laughs> that stretch of road. Um, I think that the reality is, is that because we don't control all of the pieces, we have to figure out the best way to start to move the ball, uh, you know, and or multiple balls and to, to see how we can start to create improvements. Um, and and that study is hopefully the first step in you know starting to actualize, um, you know what those things might be from like safety curbing to all all the way to you know what <laughs> it might be time for you know the town to you know uh, assume ownership of that stretch of road so that we can really achieve the things we want to achieve. Um, but we'll see in a couple months. Nick, is that an option to to take ownership of a portion of the road through the town? To my knowledge, it's always been an option. Yeah, um, I don't know. Like, I mean, obviously, we can't be like, look, we only want this like block. <laughs> right? the, the state would be like, yeah, no, we're good. Uh, you know, but if we, you know, said, look, like, we're really trying to, you know, create a certain sense of a community between here and here, we want to take, you know, uh, ownership of the road. Have that conversation with State Highway, um, you know, to, to Department of Transportation, and, and, and see what makes sense. Um, you know, I, I think for this, again, me personally, I don't think that we need the whole road, but I think that like, if the reality was that, you know, the state was like, look, take it from, you know, 
the Burke align, you know, to where you want it, fine. I think that we have to have that conversation. Um, you know, as opposed to the state saying, you know, geez, you only want this one, you know, one and a half mile stretch, uh, you know, kind of annoying for us to bring out trucks for here and for here and to have you do the. So I think like logistically, we'll have to figure it out. But, um, you know, I think that it, it might be one of our better options, personally. Yeah, I didn't even know it was an option to take a pro portion of it. That's, that's, uh, that's a good option. Because I know that we've we've talked about this for years and years. We have no say on what we can do there because it's owned by the state. The state would love us to take it, um, and I can tell you, as someone who works at the junction of Main Street and Cambridge Street, there were some holes over the, over the winter that were the size of Beirut. You know, something you'd see in Beirut um, that swallowed up cars. But again, you know, the town does a a, a pretty good job of filling there potholes the uh, state not so not so much um any other transportation option discussions that need to be added here i have a, a question i i assume the people that are riding the bus right now are aware of the uh, comment dates and whatever i, I am i am i incorrectly assuming that do do they actually i mean the last time i was on the bus was a while ago do they do they actually pass out flyers post notices does anybody know because i i know there's there's more than two people in burlington that used to take that bus that went all the way into uh what was government center or whatever um and uh i would want to make sure that they were aware if they're not i assume they are it's, I would, I would think so, Ernie. They, they have, so. sorry, they have notices on, but it's like the general web page just tells about the better bus program, not specific, not specifically route oriented. There's so, that, in other words, there's nothing that says, hey, by the way, this bus route is going to be canceled very possibly in a couple of months. Is there anything like uh, that up? But, well, there, there'll be no, no actual changes until next year. Maybe in the spring. Oh, whenever it is, but I mean, they, yeah. they, you know. So they just know, have a notice about the hearing, but nothing specific. Right. I mean, this this is really like a an eight year program, and they're probably um, almost halfway. You know, you got to okay. do the planning, then you got to do the execution. So I do think communities like ours that have changed, you know, pretty drastically in the yeah. last couple right. of years needs to weigh in on it. Marge, you have a question. I don't have a question, I have a comment. Um, Cindy Phillips works at Ashburn, um, Ashburn Place yep. and takes the uh, bus in um, fairly regularly. She's probably somebody we want to reach out to and make sure she's yeah. at this meeting. Um, and I did notice that she is at a different spot. She's not in a, like where you would think she would be to be going into Boston, like she's going north before she goes south. I don't know what's up with that, but I've seen her a couple of times coming into work. Oh. Yeah, I think personally, I don't want to be the mediator of all this between us and the, and the riders. I want to get the information out to the riders and have them speak to um, sure. to the MBTA because if you have, you know, four or five very vocal people and you've got, you know, a hundred that didn't show up, you find the route now is altered, um, not in a direction that we necessarily want it to be. Um, so we will work on getting that out. I see um, Geraldine D. I don't know if that's Jerry Degurski. I know that she used to ride the bus for years into town. Um, she actually rode with Janet uh, Bucheri that used to work at the at the chamber. Um, that was, you know, all the jobs were in the city at, at one point, and a lot of people, you know, rode in, and it was it was. The ridership was much stronger then. I think people have seen there are alternate uh, jobs. You know, I, I look at people who are driving into downtown Boston right now, and if they if they're you know tenured and have been there, that's that's great, and they got to finish out their careers. But those that you know maybe looking at other opportunities, we've got a lot of great ones right here in Burlington, and so it's 
make sure we get that word out as well. If you're driving into Cambridge, there's no need to be going there anymore if uh, some of these jobs that are opening up here. And that's really part of the focus that we should have. If we can give a couple of people three hours of their day back by finding an alternate job here in Burlington, what a, what a gift that is. And I've seen a couple of people that have already done that. Um, and you make for happy people. Any other comments? Any other open items? <laughs> Save on gas, too. Yeah, we're seeing the, you know, we don't get to see it all. I mean, certainly of my generation, I won't be able to see it all the way to fruition, but this is how it changes. This is how people who want to make a difference, who want to, you know, help with climate change issues, that want to take alternate means of transportation and utilize you know, ride shares and, and public transportation, you've got to give them a, a workable option. So, you know, it's a, it's one of those chicken and eggs. And I think anytime you get the, you know, the MBTA has got to make decisions for a large population. They're going to make it for those that show up and those that give them the information that's useful. So I want to make sure that uh, we should probably have a discussion with the 128 Business Council asking how this bus redesign, I can't imagine that they weren't involved and, and know about it, but is there a way that Burlington's changing um, business population can be taken into consideration so we don't wait for the next generation bus redesign to, to take advantage of um, you know, the opportunity to get something done now. So just to, to summarize, we'll reach out to, um, to who was I going to say? To Amy, Jen, uh, Jelena ty uh, typed in in the uh, chat. She makes sure that she posts things. Um, BCAT is a great resource for this, um, not only on on programs that they've got going on, but their social media is very well followed by by residents in town. But it's also word of mouth. If you know people who are riding it. Um, you know, that's that's the time to get information. I don't think hang posters at the stops without them being taken down quickly, but that might be another opportunity. You know, do you know the changes are coming? Um, I would think the T would be getting that information out. People, people who depend on it tend to be on top of it. Certainly the person who wrote to the selectmen knew about the impending changes somehow. Um, so we'll continue to push that information out. Yeah, that's that's very important because as we see here, if we don't speak up for ourselves, we see changes and things coming from other towns and other places, and then we sort of have to live with it. So it's very important that one of the things on the town meeting transportation committee that we found was that, again, it's very important to what do we do here in Burlington? What access is important to us? And this is the forum where this is going to come out. So. It's just a just a very good job that people are doing. Yeah, and John, to that to that point, it's important that we also. I mean, the nice thing about our town, we are a business based community. I mean, so much of our tax revenue comes from the businesses. It also helps the state immensely with the employment, and so letting them know that we are, you know, one of the economic engines of the area. We need to make sure that we're being serviced, you know, for those employees that come here. And those as residents will benefit from from that additional. So there is a, a little bit of uh, you know a, a two pronged approach there, letting them know, hey, we need you know you've we've brought these businesses in, and we need to be able to make sure that they remain viable and contribute to the tax base not only here but uh, at the state level. Um, there's no more room in Kendall Square, and if Massachusetts wants to continue to benefit from you know the life science boom, they've got to move out to the suburbs and we've been at, at, at the forefront of some of that. Yeah. The Broad, Broad Institute to relocate here was a huge win. That was fantastic. When I saw that, yeah, absolutely. I don't know who's responsible, but good job. Good yeah. job all around. So now we have representation in town from Harvard, MIT and Northeastern. I don't know that anyone else, you know, aside from Boston has, has that resume. So these are things that we have to leverage in our discussions. Uh, and, uh, 
thank you for for being so involved because a lot of people especially you know there's people on this committee there's people in burlington that are very busy they're working they have kids that, you know they've got so much going on and it's it's really volunteers like this group but also like you john and and millie and and eileen that take an interest in this and listen for information um i've got a number of people that send me all kinds of information things that are that are going on and that's that's part Part of that is is critical in moving us forward. Information overload um, happens to all of us, but when you get specific information, hey, there's a meeting, there's a redesign, there's things I got that, that's critical for us to to help to make uh, you know, formulate some some strategies to to pass on to the select board. Um, there's a button on that MBTA page to submit feedback online. So, yes. Mel, you were asking if you could pop it in the chat somewhere, but I don't know if that's worth maybe putting somewhere on, like BCAT could be sharing that. And yeah, and, and I've gone through that. It, okay. it, what, you know, it's primarily asking, what do you, what public route are you driving, are you riding on now? So that's where it's critical to get the people who are using it. Again, and I've been involved in a couple of transportation initiatives, Everyone says, yeah, if you have that thing come down my street, I'll ride it. And then you run it down that street. Well, you know, it was a little cold that day and, you know, it was raining and all of a sudden the decisions and, and the work that goes into it. So they want to hear from the people who are riding it. But that's a, that's a great point. I will put together something that we can um, share, you know, just a, a quick blurb that will outline what's happening, how people can get involved and in, through taking the survey or um, attending the meeting. And then we'll we'll push it out to the points that we've discussed. Very cool. Any other comments or topics to be discussed? Wow, you guys are quiet tonight. <laughs> All right, do we have any motions then? I have a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Carson? <laughs> Sorry. Unanimous for those that have, are voting. 4-0. Four 4-0. Zero. Four zero. Okay. Melissa, right. thank you for taking the notes. Thank you, uh, Melissa. Yeah, no problem. I'll email them out. Okay, I will be out of pocket next week, so if there's anything you need to get to me. And Nick, I wanted to take off. How much information? I want to make sure that we're in compliance with the open meeting law when sharing information. I'm a little, um, I guess, in the in the dark on can I send out emails to the to the group? As long as they don't you discuss can. it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Ernie's got it. If if anyone on this call knows, it better be Ernie. Um, yeah. No. Absolutely. As long as there's no discussion, you can you can share information. No one ever talks to me anyway, so that's good. <laughs> All right, folks. Have a great Thank night. Thank you. Good night, Thank everybody. You. Thanks, Bye-bye. See you Bye. soon.